So today we're going to trim this pony. He is insulin resistant and tends to suffer from metabolic issues. So I like to keep his toe really short to make sure that there's not too much leverage on the lamina. And you can see altogether he doesn't have bad feet, um, but he definitely has a little bit of flare that I want to take care of. You can see a little bit of the excess length here in the quarter. As I'm cleaning it out, my hoof pick really sinks into there. Overall though, he's got nice concavity. He has tends to have pretty good feet. He's comfortable on all surfaces and we don't really have too much issue with him. So as I look at this foot here, I'm looking at the width to the length. Um, the first thing I'm trying to figure out is where I want to bring his heels to. So I'm looking at this collateral groove exit. I've got periopal skin in line with that. Same thing over here. Also the height of my frog settles right into that. Uh, the only thing that's going to change that in terms of my trimming plan is if as I'm trimming this heel, I get down into where I would be touching the sole or going into the sole. It's really important when you place these nippers on, looking at trimming this heel, kind of something like this, that you don't angle them off to the side or angle them forward or back. You want that blade to come in and give you a nice flat heel surface, kind of in line with where the bottom of this collateral groove would be. As we rasp the heel, we're gonna mimic that angle with our rasp. So I wanna set myself up with my nipper at that same angle so that I have less rasping to do. I generally like to leave a little bit of material when I'm nipping so that I have something to rasp. You don't want to make the mistake of taking too much and then when you're rasping um, you can't even get your nipper marks out or you'd be going way too short. So I'm going to come through the quarter here nice and flat and then when I get to about this point, my toe pillar, I'm going to start angling my nipper at a 45. And I'm just coming in to the edge of the hoof wall, which is where this horse's golden line would be, or is. And so I'm just putting on my bevel at the toe to save myself again some rasping. As I come back through this pillar, I'm coming back flat. And I'm not quite down flat to the sole. I'm just a little bit above it. And then I'm gonna come in and do this heel as well. So something like that. Now my heels aren't even, I'm gonna rasp them and clean this all up. So when I'm rasping the heel, it's really important that I'm mimicking the bottom of this collateral groove depth. So something like this. I'm not way back off the foot, I'm not beveling, I'm not beveling to the side of the foot. I'm just coming in nice and flat. Jack, nice and flat to mimic that collateral groove. I'm also not hitting the toe. And I'm just gonna bring this heel back until one of two things happens. And I'll show you that here. Okay, so either A, I get to my line here, which I've done, that's right where I wanted my heel, or B, I get down into the sole here, um, right in this switchback area, and I start thinning the sole. I don't wanna do that. So I'm still well above that sole. There's a lot of chalky exfoliating stuff in here. So I'm content with this heel placement. I like the angle of it, um, that it's in line with that collateral groove depth. I'm a little high here through the quarter, but I haven't got there yet. Overall, that's a good heel placement for this horse. Now, as I come through, I'm gonna come through this quarter and I'm gonna wrap around to this side. I'm gonna come flat across the quarter and take this high spot off right here. And I'm making sure that my heel is the highest point, higher than my quarter. So I'm just coming in flat. And I'm gonna create a little bit of what we call the quarter arch here. And so if we, if we look for the side, from the side, maybe you can see that a bit better. I'm a tiny bit high on the edge of my heel here. So we'll just ramp that down a little bit. 
And so now as I'm looking down, my heel is the highest point, comes down into my quarter. And I could even still lower this part of the heel a little bit more so that this rearmost part is the highest. And it's a bit tricky to do this because I'm rasping this bar at the same time. You could take your knife and clean the bar up and then do this, but I find it easier just to ignore the bar, get the heel where I want it, and then I'll finish up with the bars later. So now I'm ramping down nicely from that heel into my quarter. Now I'm gonna come in and do this other side. And again, I'm mimicking that collateral groove depth with the angle of my rasp. And if I'm having trouble getting at the inside, I could also come across the hoof. Now it's this angle of my rasp that I have to watch to make sure it matches that collateral groove. I've got a little piece of frog here that's in my way and my rasp is catching on it. So we'll just move that. And now I want to keep checking and assessing that my heels are level. That is looking pretty close to me. So I'm gonna leave it for now and I'm gonna come in and do this quarter. Okay, now my quarters are sticking up a little bit higher than my sole, but I'm okay with that because they are lower than my heel. I have a little bit of an edge here. We'll just clean that up. Now as I come into my toe, between 10 and two, or my toe pillars, I wanna hold this rasp at about a 45 degree angle. And I don't wanna rasp off any of the sole at the toe. I just wanna drop off from in front of it there, just like that. I also want to blend this bevel that I'm putting on the toe into my quarter so it's nice and smooth like this. I don't want there to be like, there's a bit of an edge right here where it goes from bevel to flat. I want to smooth that transition out so it's even. I've got a bit of a bump at the toe here. So I'm pretty happy with that overall. I like where that breakover is. It's coming right back to the edge of his sole. Now this lump here, I'm gonna clean off. That's exfoliating sole. Um, so we'll take that off in a minute. But you can see where this bevel comes right back to his golden line. And it drops off quite steeply from there. That's really important on this horse because he has metabolic issues and his lamina is weak. I wanna make sure I'm not putting any strain on it. I'm gonna come in now and clean up these bars as well as that lump at the sole. And I'm gonna finish with cleaning up the frog before I pull the foot forward and top dress it. So this bar right now is kind of bowed out. It's not nice and straight and it's high. It would be level with the rest of the hoof right now. So I'm gonna come in and you'll notice how I hold my knife with the blade coming out the bottom of my hand. A lot of people are tempted to do it like this and then all of your power comes more from your shoulder and less from your arm and your wrist. And you tend to skip off the hoof and don't have as much um, dexterity to be um, precise. So I come through here and I'm just using the curl of this knife to bring this bar over a little bit so it's nice and straight. And I'm just taking the edge off here and I'm using the curve of this knife, you can see here, to mimic the concavity in this sole. So I'm not cutting any of the sole off. I'm just bringing the bar down to blend in with the sole. Just like that. I'm really happy with that bar, it looks great. I'm gonna come in and do this other bar now, as well as that lump of exfoliating sole at the toe. So same thing, I'm gonna come down. You can see I left the flat part of the heel nice and flat and I ramped the bar down just ahead of it. So from right about here, I'm coming in and I'm bringing this edge of the bar over so that now that edge it would be nice and straight and parallel to the frog. And we'll take the outer edge here. And again, I'm using the curl of my knife, or the, sorry, the curve of my knife to mimic the natural shape and concavity of the sole. And I'm not digging in and really cleaning out much of this sole. And again, you can see where it goes from flat here and then to ramp right down into the bar. Now I wanna take my curve and I wanna just cut that lump off, just like that. So that looks a lot better. Now he doesn't have that big ridge there. 
there is a bit of a high, easy. There's a bit of a high spot right here, so I could clean that up. I could either use my knife or my rasp. There's also a lot of chalky and what would be exfoliating sole all through this region of the toe. Now, it's tempting to wanna to trim that off. Um, I tend not to. I like to let the horse use it as a bit of a buffer and exfoliate it when, it, when he's ready. I will take that little ridge at the toe though that we just left there. I'm gonna do it with my rasp. And like, it's not gonna take much. Just a couple little swipes here to blend that in. That's, that's a lot better. It's still a little bit high, but he'll wear that on, its, on his own. And now it's not a big, large lump. Now I wanna take a look at this frog and clean it up. And you can see a bit of an edge here at the back, as well as how high this frog is. It's almost higher than the rest of my hoof. It's close, like see my knife rocks on it because it's high. So I wanna bring this down. Anything detached is not gonna reattach. So I wanna cut off all of this rotten stuff. And I can do that just by hooking these edges at the back. I also want to make sure that this frog ramps down into the foot. Now I don't want to, I don't want to over thin the frog. And I, so I don't want to go a lot deeper than this, but I do want to open up these grooves. See how much dirt and stuff is stuck in there? If I don't open those up, that's going to continue to get trapped in there. So I'm holding my knife more upright now, and I'm using the curl and the tip of the blade to clean that up. So that looks a lot nicer than over here where debris can still get trapped in there. Now I'm gonna come in on this side and use the curve again with my knife a little more upright just to open up that side so that the debris can't get stuck in there. And you can see he's got a little bit of a bruise here. That's just a bruise. I'm not even really worried about it. Overall, I would call that finished from the bottom here. I'm gonna check my heel height, looks good. He's got, um, um, overall, I like this. As we look down, our heels look pretty even. I think I might take just another swipe or two off this inside one. It looks a little bit high, and there's a bit of an edge. Let's take a look at that. Uh, a little bit more off the bar side. I might have to, might have to use my knife for that, we'll see. Oh no, that got it. That looks better. So I'm pretty happy with that. We've cleaned up the frog, we've cleaned up the bars, and we brought that break over way back. So now as I'm looking at this hoof from the top, I mean, ultimately it looks pretty good, but I do see how the tighter connection comes down to about here, and then it's starting to flare. So I've got my break over set quite a bit farther back from here, uh, and I did that with my bevel from the bottom. So I'm really just gonna take a little bit of this flare and make a point of shortening up his trim cycle. So right now it's been about five weeks. I would probably schedule him again for three weeks just to make sure that the toe's not growing so long that it's creating this flare. I would rather do that than over rasp the top of his foot to remove all the flare in one go. Now if my hands were tied and the owner was telling me I couldn't come back for six to eight weeks, I would probably rasp a lot more on the top because it would help to mitigate, thin the wall, um, and decrease some of that leverage on the toe. This is my own horse, so and I know he's going to get trimmed again in our next course, which is about three and a half, four weeks away, so it should be good timing for him. Good boy. Pick up your foot. So I'm gonna bring him forward on the stand here. And I'm just gonna take care of some of this flare. As I do it, I'm gonna make sure that I hold my rasp to mimic the same angle as the upper growth. I'm not gonna come in and mimic the bottom flared portion. I wanna mimic the upper tight connected growth. I typically prefer to do it more vertically like this, but sometimes I'll come in and go sideways as well. It really just depends on the horse, the positioning, and how everything's working. So I'm just gonna do half of the foot here. Kind 
of something like that. I like that. I have a little bit of a ridge along here. There we go. So overall, if we could split this hoof in half, we've reduced the leverage, taken care of the flare, and set it up so it's not gonna happen again. I'm gonna continue bringing that around now. I like to do it in two parts so you can see the difference. I mean, really, when we looked at this foot before, it doesn't look overly bad. It's hardly flared, but I'm being picky. So here I've come in and removed the little flare that was there. I'm constantly stopping to check and see. I've got a little bit more of a ridge right here. Over here is looking really good. And for me, a lot of this um, top dressing is by feel. I mean, I'm looking at the angle, but then I also want to feel it and feel for ridges, feel for that angle change in the slope of the hoof wall. And then I take the fine side of my rasp and really just take off the sharp edge I've left. To, and that's gonna be what turns the bevel I put on the bottom from a sharp edged bevel into a roll. Okay, overall, I really like that. I'm also looking at the shape of the hoof. Overall, does it feel round to me? You know, are there any little edges or corners I could clean up? I think this looks pretty good. So we'll have a look at it on the ground. Let's get him to stand up. Yeah, that's a good boy. And so now if I'm looking at this, I like it a lot better than before. If we look at the untrimmed, you can see how much leverage is down here and all of this flare, and that's gonna tear at this upper growth. So over here, we've removed all this leverage so that this line comes nice and straight down. The hoof wall connection, or the hoof wall angle is uniform. The connection is not. We have a little deviation in connection about Two, two thirds of the way down. But if we shorten up this horse's trim cycle and keep on top of it, we'll be able to grow this connected growth all the way down. We're gonna do the same with this foot here. You can see the good growth coming down to about this dark where the color changes. And then we've just got quite a bit of leverage down here at the bottom, it's starting to flare. Now it's not significant. This horse is on a nice short trim cycle of about four to five weeks, but I would like to just clean up this leverage and probably shorten that cycle by about a week. He has a bit of the same thing as the other hoof here. He's got some retained sole at the toe, which we'll clean up. He's got quite a bit of length through the quarter, um, just a bit of heel. When I'm looking at this, I see my collateral groove exits down here. My frog height's pretty in line with that. Overall, that's gonna be where I wanna trim my heel to. So I'm gonna come in and just take a little bit here, leave myself something to rasp. And again, I'm coming in with the angle of my nipper blade, trying to match the angle at the bottom of this collateral groove just in the heel region. So same thing over here, bringing that in. And then as I come forward into the quarter, I'm just going flat to the sole and I'm going just a hair above it, leaving myself something to rasp. And again, when I get to this region here about my toe pillar, I'm gonna angle my nippers off at a 45, just to help me with my bevel so that I don't have so much hoof to rasp. If you're not confident with your nippers, you definitely could back off a little bit and leave yourself a little more to rasp. So flat through my quarter, and then I'm coming up to match that heel. Just like that. And so overall, that looks pretty good. We'll smooth it out here with our rasp. I'm gonna hold my rasp again to mimic the angle at the bottom of this collateral groove. And I'm coming back until one of two things happens. One, I get to my line, which I'm just starting to come to here, or two, until I start getting down to where I would hit the sole. And so that looks good for that heel. I'm gonna come across the foot this time for this inside heel, and I'm paying attention to this angle of my rasp that it's even with the bottom of my collateral groove angle. And I'm not, as I come through, I'm not rounding it off the side. I'm just keeping it nice and flat. So we'll have a look at our heel height here. It's a little bit deceiving with this bit of frog in the way, 
but I think those are pretty close. I'm gonna leave them for now, and once I clean up that frog and bar, I can assess them again. So I'm gonna come through my quarter nice and flat, and I don't have a whole lot to take off here. I'm just making sure it ramps down from my heel into the quarter. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Pretty happy with that. If I look down, my heels back up on these two areas are higher than my quarter down here. Now I'm gonna go through into my bevel. And all I'm really doing, because I nipped it so aggressively, all I'm doing is just taking these nip marks off and kind of blending my bevel into that quarter where it's flat to make sure the transition is nice and smooth. I'm also kind of looking at the overall shape of this hook and making sure I'm bringing it in to be nice and round so that I don't have a, you know, a point over here or it's not super oval, it's nice and round. I'm gonna come in with my knife now and work on these bars and this lump of sole. We'll give him a little break first. He's a little wiggly. You okay, big guy? Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Okay. Okay, so let's start with this lump of exfoliating sole. I'm just gonna help it off, just like that. Now I'm gonna come back into my heel and I kind of draw this imaginary line here, like if the hoof wall came all the way around, my bar would kind of start here. And I'm just gonna bring that bar down to match the level of the sole and use the curl, or sorry, the curve of my blade just to mimic that natural concavity and clean it out like that. Then we'll do the bar on the other side. Easy, big guy, easy. What are you doing? And I'm just gonna do the same thing here. And just bring all of this, there was a little bit of bar up in here. I just brought it all down to mimic the natural concavity of the sole. Just like that. And I could bring this top edge back just a tiny bit. Just like that. Now see the tip of this frog is lifting off. So I'm gonna cut that off. I'm gonna clean up this frog here anyway. Anything detached will not reattach. So any little holes or grooves I have, I'm gonna make sure I clean them up and open them up so that dirt and stuff doesn't stay trapped in there. You do have to be really careful with this. Um, obviously, you don't wanna to cut too deep, especially at the back here into the heel bulbs. So if you were, if he had thrush or things were eaten away a little bit deeper, I would be a lot more cautious. I know that I've got quite a bit of room here. Okay, so that's a lot better. I'd like to just clean up these collateral grooves and open them up just a wee bit, just like that, so that that last bit of dirt and poop that's down in there is easy to clean out. I use both a left and a right curved blade knife, depending on what I'm doing. I don't necessarily use them in a left and right, in my left and right hands respectively. I kind of, I'm kind of all over the place. There, that looks a lot better. I really like the look of that frog now. The collateral grooves are nice and open. We can clean this out. Actually, in saying that, I think I'm gonna clean this one out just a tiny bit more. See that deep, dark crack down here? I just wanna kinda hook the edge of that frog and see if I can't open it up just a bit more. That's a little bit better. There we go. We're gonna look down the foot and make sure we've got no big ridges or lumps and bumps. And now that I've cleaned up that frog, easy, Jack, what are you doing? He's just trying to be difficult. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna look at that heel height again. It's a little bit deceiving, but I actually, I think this heel's a tiny bit high. So I'm gonna take that down. And it's not a lot, just a couple of swipes. I've got a little, little bit of an edge here now where it's higher than the back of my heel. 
There we go, I like that. And then looking down at the toe, it's a little bit raised here where that lump of exfoliating sole was. And again, for this purpose, we could come in with our rasp and just clean that up just ever so much. That would have worn off with this horse out in his paddock in about five minutes. So I'm not really gonna be super particular about something like that. Overall, I think this looks really good. And again, when I'm taking this flare off, I'm gonna hold my rasp to match the angle of the upper growth. I'm not gonna mimic the angle of this bottom flared part. And I try to just go straight up and down. I don't let my rasp curve as I go because then I would end up kind of dubbing the toe off. So just nice and straight, working on that flare until it comes in to match the angle of the upper growth. And I'm going slow so that I can constantly check to see if I'm there yet because I don't want to over thin this hoof wall. I have a little ridge just right here. That's better. And so I just did half of this so that you can see the difference between lining this all up here and the bit of flare we still have over here. Now we'll do the outside. So I like how this side is coming in. This looks good. Now you can see this huge point at the toe because I haven't gotten there yet. So we'll bring that back. Now I like all of that. I've got a ridge right here. And it's not so much about that ridge, like to take that ridge off. I could have just come in sideways and taken the ridge off, but the ridge is there because I haven't taken enough off the bottom. If I take just a little bit more overall, it'll take the ridge with it. And that means then that I've removed that leverage. Once I'm done, or I think I'm done, I've got this where I want it, I'm gonna come in with the fine side again and just take the sharp edge off along the bottom. And not a lot, just enough to turn my bevel into a roll and kind of round this out. And I see a little bit of an edge right here. So I'm gonna come in and take just a little bit more right there, just to kind of round that up. That looks a lot better. I just wanna have a look at the underside because now we have almost taken our bevel completely off with all that rasping from the top. So I'm just gonna come in and re-bevel. And not a huge, like big angle to the bottom of the hoof. I'm just re-beveling kind of back into that sole at the toe, just inside the golden line. Just like that. Now he's got a little bit of bevel. So kind of a bit of the same thing that was going on in the front. He's got some retained sole. Uh, this frog needs cleaning up. Not a ton of heel height. I tend to leave um, a little bit more heel on the hinds because I don't want to create a negative angle. But we'll see when we get to that with our rasp in a minute. Again, I'm putting this 45 right around the toe. And then as I get back here into my quarter at my toe pillar, I'm coming in more flat, just down to the sole or a little bit above it. 
And just like on the fronts, I'm gonna bring that heel in at the same angle as the bottom of the collateral groove. Flat through my quarter. Then we'll come into this one. And I'm coming, this foot is a little bit skewed the way it's twisted, but I want, I'm gonna trim all this frog that's sitting up too high. I wanna come down to my collateral groove exit right in line with my periopal skin, just as long as it means I'm not invading that sole. Come through my quarter, and then we're gonna carry this bevel around the toe, blend it in at our transition points, and overall, I'm pretty happy with that. And again, this hoof is a lot more oval than the fronts were, which is normal for a hind foot. I'm gonna come in and clean up this bar here. Just bringing it down to match the natural concavity of the sole. And there was a bit of a lump of sole in behind it, so I just cleaned that up. I'm gonna take this exfoliating lump here just like that. It's really tempting to take my knife and clean all of this up. But again, I'm gonna leave him as much protection and padding as I can. He is a barefoot horse that's in work a few days a week and it's important that he has all the protection he can, that he needs. I'll just clean that up. It's got a little rock stuck in here, so I am gonna Kind of take that out, clean up that bar, a little bit of a lump here. That looks good. Now I'm gonna clean up this frog. So again, the tip is already detached. So I'm just gonna come in underneath it. And as I come back, I'm gonna bring my knife out to the surface just to make sure I'm not cutting this frog deep. Now I'm gonna clean up the collateral grooves as we did before, because there's a lot of stuff stuck down in this crevice. And we're gonna bring this frog down so that it's in line with our heel. It was actually coming off there anyway. And so I've freed up a lot of space in this groove there which is nice, and I think I'm gonna do so on this other side because I can see there's a bit of stuff stuck in there. So I'm just gonna very carefully bring that over like that to make sure that it's completely exposed so that that debris isn't staying stuck in there. Okay, so we're gonna check our heel height here. My inside heel is quite a bit higher. Not so much at the back of the heel, but right in here. I'm just gonna bring that down a bit. Good boy. That looks better. This hoof is a little bit skewed, which makes it a little bit challenging to read. A little bit more, I think. Good boy. That looks better. Now, I, because I've lowered that heel a little bit more, I'm gonna bring this bar down and over just a tiny bit more. That looks better. So I'm pretty happy with this now. The heel height's good, the bar's good. I'm really not worried again about this little bit of exfoliating sole at the toe, but I could just clean it up. It doesn't really matter. That's gonna flake off when he's ready and all of this is gonna clean itself out. Now, if we're looking from the top, he doesn't have very much flare on the lateral side. He has a little bit of inside flare, which is typical um, of a slightly cowhocked horse, which he is. That's where the asymmetry is coming on the bottom of his foot in the heel balance as well. He's just turned in a little bit, but we're gonna clean it up and straighten it out the best we can. 
So I'm gonna start with the outside of his foot, which really doesn't have much flair. So all I'm gonna do is take that sharp edge off. Just gonna come around and turn that bevel into a roll, just like that. Now on the inside of his hoof, I'm gonna have to take just a little bit of that flare to bring the hoof back underneath itself. And just to kind of smooth out the overall sh shape so that it's more uniform and isn't sweeping to that inside. That looks a lot better. Just like that. So I did hardly anything over here and just brought this side in a little bit. So same thing, we're gonna come in, bring these heels to match the bottom of the collateral groove, flat through the quarter. I'm gonna start my bevel at my pillar area, about 10 and two, and that's gonna be at that 45. And then come back flat through my quarter, just above the edge of my sole. And I'm not taking very much heel off here at all. It's really hard actually to clip just a little bit of heel. It's easier to take a lot, so I'll just rasp the rest. You can see that that golden line here is a little bit stretched. And so I'm gonna bring my bevel right back to the inside of that golden line. And I did that on all of his feet. It's just a little bit more evident on this one that that golden line is stretched. And I wanna make sure I have a nice sharp 45 degrees. You know, lots of people end up with about a 30. Um, I like about a 45. That way when I take the edge off from the top, I still have enough of a bevel to form the bottom part of my roll. So we'll bring these bars down back here and just mimicking that natural concavity I'm going to take this little flap of exfoliating sole off now I'm going to just do this side of the frog while I'm here in and do this bar. This medial side of the frog is really growing over the collateral groove so I'm going to really open that up just to make sure that we can get in there and clean that. That looks a lot better. And I don't like this little raised edge here. So on this horse, I mean, I've really done quite a lot of frog trimming. I normally, like this time of year, we've gone from our wet spring and we're coming into dry here. And so everybody's got a lot of exfoliating frog. But typically I do very little frog trimming and it's one of my goals to not have to completely restructure the frog like this. But there's a time and a place for everything. And when that frog is overgrowing and trapping all that dirt and crud in there, then we can't leave it. So I want to assess his heel height and make sure we have balance in this hoof before we move on. Good boy. So I'm gonna bring him out and kind of let that hoof hang. It's a little bit hard to tell here. I like that a lot. We have a little ridge at the toe. I'm okay with that though, because he's gonna wear that off in about five minutes out there in his paddock. I'm actually pretty happy with this heel height. It looks pretty uniform. It's a little bit hard to decipher. Maybe this inside heel is a little bit high. We'll take a swipe off of it just to be sure. That ought to do it. Okay, so now we'll bring him forward and see what we've got here. A little bit of medial flare. 
This lateral side looks pretty good, so I think we'll do what we did on the other one. And just kind of turn this bevel into a roll over here. Take that sharp edge back. And then we're gonna address this little bit of a flare on the inside. Same as I did on the front, I'm gonna hold that rasp to mimic the angle of the connected upper growth. Whether I'm doing it this way or I come in this way, now it's this angle, the short angle of my rasp that I'm watching. And then I'm just gonna make sure that I take that edge off, turn it into my roll. Make sure it all blends in. Overall, I'm pretty happy with that.